I want to talk to you about collective bargaining. You may wonder why a QC would address an audience like this about collective bargaining. And the reason is that we have a problem with collective bargaining in this country. When Thatcher came to power, 82% of British workers had the benefit of a collective agreement as to say one or more terms and conditions of, of employment. I'm used to feedback. With, uh, one or more of their terms and conditions of employment was set by a collective agreement negotiated between unions and employers. That percentage now is 23%. That's to say just over two out of every ten workers have got terms and conditions of employment protected by a collective agreement. In the private sector, it's down to 16%. And you th may think to yourself, well, maybe that's, that's the way of the world. Not so. The average in the EU is coverage of 62%. In Austria, the percentage is 98%. In France, the percentage is 95%. Only one country has got a lower collective bargaining coverage than Britain. That's Lithuania on 15%. Now this is a serious, serious problem. And let me tell you why. There are a number of reasons why collective bargaining is important. I know that you have all this in the back of your mind, but let's just pull it forwards for, for a moment. Collective bargaining is essential for democracy at work. Only through collective bargaining can workers participate in the decisions which affect their working lives. Collective bargaining is essential for social justice. Only through collective bargaining do workers have any chance of neutering the imbalance of power between the individual worker and the employer. Collective bargaining is essential for, for the eradication of inequality. Now, other speakers have spoken about inequality and we'll hear more about it tonight. But inequality is the major problem with Britain today. We've got greater economic inequality in Britain than we've had in the 19th century, or, or as great as at the end of the 19th century. And inequality is bad for everyone. It's not just bad for the poor. That's obvious. It's actually bad for the rich as well. If you read that book by uh, Wilkinson and Pickett called Mind the Gap, some of you will have done that. They demonstrate that on every social measure across all societies in the world, the greater the inequality, the worse the conditions of life are. Higher mortality rates, not just for the poor, but for the, for the rich. Higher perinatal mortality, more people going to prison, greater drugs problem, more crime problems and so forth and, and uh, so on. Collective bargaining is the answer to inequality. And then there is the reason for a collective bargaining that particularly interests me. Collective bargaining, or the right to collective bargaining, is a fundamental human right. The right to collective bargaining is protected by <laughs> Convention 98 of the International Labour Organization. It's protected by Article 6.2 of the European Social Charter. It's protected by Article 28 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. It's protected by Article 11 of the European Convention on Human Rights. And there's a landmark judgment of the European Court of Human Rights in the year 2008, which held that everyone has the right to uh, collective uh, bargaining. So for all those reasons, we need collective bargaining. And my plea to the trade union movement is, Make that demand heard. All the other demands are important, but the demand for collective bargaining is essential. I hear trade unionists moaning about lack of members and the difficulties of organising more members. Nobody's going to join a trade union if they can't get the benefits of collective bargaining. And this attack on collective bargaining, we know where it comes from, neoliberalism, they want trade unions out because it's a distortion of the labour market. This attack on collective bargaining is a global 
problem. It's everywhere. The multinationals are attacking it. This uh, transatlantic trade and investment partnership, you bet they'll have a go at collective bargaining there. The European Union, the Troika, one of the conditions that they're imposing on countries like Greece for their economic um, a bailout is that they must decentralise collective bargaining. Decentralise means that you can only have collective bargaining at employer level. You can't have sector-wide collective bargaining or national collective uh, bargaining. So this is, is a major problem. That's what my plea to the trade union movement is. The collective bargaining has got to be top of our agenda. I don't care who we're talking to, the Labour Party or any other political party, collective bargaining is, is what we have to ask for. And before I leave the platform, let me add one other thought, obvious to you all. You cannot have collective bargaining without the right to strike. 